Mr. Sridhar Vimbu. Thank you. Thanks, Mason. Actually, this is our largest event by far. This is actually more than two and a half times the last year's event. That's actually one of the reasons we moved to Austin. It's also the reason that our office here is growing fast. We're probably going to soon hit like a hundred mark here. So that's how fast we are growing. In my presentation, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of behind the scenes look at Zoho, the company. I'm, you are going to hear a lot about products and technologies throughout, so I'm going to only briefly touch on it. But I'm going to talk about Zoho, the company, behind all of this. So this is the title, and I'm going to emphasize strongly the first part, because as they say, culture eats strategy for breakfast. This actually is uh, from the management guru, Peter Drucker, but nobody can find the actual quote where he said it, but it's widely attributed to him, as with a lot of these memes. But he said something similar, so that sort of culture is more superior to strategy or any of that, but this is sort of a pithy quote and it's really good to put it up there. And we call ourselves the operating system for business, operating system for your business. And normally the word operating system, the phrase is used to denote something that runs your device. Right? You have an operating system on your phone, your computer, all of that. Or even your servers in the data center. But we use the operating system here in the way that it runs your entire business. That all aspects of business are knit together. The same way that the operating system is a unified thing that knits together everything on that computer. And this is actually a a sweeping and bold claim. We are aware of this. We actually make this claim intentionally. It's not something easy to make the claim. And if you look at our product suite, I mean, this is right there on our, if you go to our Zoho Mail, or any of the products, the, the hamburger menu on the top left, this is what shows up. And you can count over 35 plus here, and actually the count is now, there's some that are not even in there. For example, the presentation itself is made on Zoho Backstage that's not yet even listed there. So there's more like that. So there's over 40 plus applications in the suite, and along with maybe at least 50 or 60 mobile apps. And I want to emphasize those because this year our mobile traffic is going to exceed our web traffic for the first time ever. That's something that it's I mean, unimaginable even five years ago in the business landscape. I mean, the whole consumer internet has gone mobile, but now the business is following. It's very clear now. Our, we are seeing our traffic charts and we are even kind of amazed by the, the growth in the mobile traffic. And this year we see that the mobile traffic is going to explode. So there is over 100 apps if you can count the mobile in there. And we are now building more and more and more. This is actually at a faster and faster pace on this. So that is what this, this whole suite is what we call the operating system, and that's what Zoho One is all about. And I want to point out, all of these are internally developed. None of them acquired. If you typically see a company in this landscape, they have a breadth of product portfolio that would have been acquired, put together from various pieces. But that strategy has a lot of issues. I mean, it's not very easy to integrate code. It's not very easy to blend cultures. So what tends to happen is you have an acquired product. The most common thing is people start leaving. Maybe after six months, after a year, after two years, and the continuity is lost. So you have things that don't quite fit, and you see cancellations. After five years, six years, you see a product that was a major acquisition five years prior. You go to Wall Street Journal, there was a big splash. Five years later, that's gone. It's not even to be seen. We don't do that. We actually have never acquired any of these products. It's all built on the same underlying framework. Just like Zoho is the operating system for your business, there is an operating system underneath that powers all of the Zoho products. That's a common fabric, software fabric that we built. It's a homegrown fabric and on which all of the products are built. And we are at about 5,000 people. And we even at that size, I mean, look at the product portfolio, we punch way above our weight. I mean, we are doing a lot more than what the 5,000 people will indicate. We have a lot of people, it looks like from 5,000 people, but 
still you look at the portfolio of products, and this is, in fact, Zoho is only one of the divisions of the company. There's actually another major division that you know, I won't even talk about here. And that has another 30 product line here that addresses the IT management. It's called Manage Engine. And we are doing all this. So the products I show here is only one part of all what we do. And I want to actually show you this, uh, this video. This is one of our customers in New Zealand, a large customer. You know, the entire retail landscape is changing. Any primitive retail experience is getting taken off the table by big online players. And with that, we have to change as a retail company. In total, we have 22 different retail companies under the warehouse group, and we are the largest retailer in New Zealand. And we have in excess of $3 billion a year revenue. Historically, in our function, we've had antiquated systems. We've predominantly used Excel spreadsheets, etc. We often use tools that people only use in work. So we've started using Zoho probably about six months ago. Now we're going to be able to use apps. It's more aligned to what they're used to outside of work. One of the things that we have not been able to do is really communicate with all of our 15,000 employees. And the costs are so high with other providers in terms of getting communication platforms in place. We've never been able to do that. With Zoho Click, we can now communicate with every single employee, either one-to-one -one or one-to-many. Our CEO can have conferences and make sure that people get to hear messages directly from him, which is a very powerful proposition for us. There is just this, this energy we feel we are unleashing in the organization of communication. You know, we're, prior we would have people calling people on their personal phones, texting, all kinds of stuff, and there was no way to really offer our employees a very good, swift communication platform, and Click has enabled us to do that. My favorite current Zoho app is Desk, because it really services the need of our operating model in HR, but I'm excited by Zoho people. I think that capability it's got is going to be really revolutionary for us as a function. We just used to handle calls from 15,000 employees for HR-related issues. They would be related to health and safety, they would be related to you know, barriers customers are facing out in the front lines, and we would take four or five days to get back to the employees with a solution or even a point person to address it. And now that entire process is automated and our internal employees are getting service in near real time using this tool. Zoho One is anything you would need for automation of the office and, and employees is available there from your spreadsheets to your documents to your presentations to your collaboration tools to your communication tools to your video to managing infrastructure. You get over 37 products to enable your employees. And they call it the operating system of the business and it actually is the operating system of the business. The advantage of having one complete solution is entering information in one place, accessed in many places. So from an internal customer, you get a similar look and feel. Once you get used to the system, as you move around apps, you intuitively know how to use that app because it's got the same look and feel. The fact that it's mobile accessible really opens it up for our organization that's got multiple sites, multiple uh, locations across different countries. Doing business with a modern, agile, uh, futuristic type company like Zoho is very important for us because they, they take a lot of the blocking and tackling we would be doing in employee enablement and, and office systems away from us so we can really focus on end customer user experience and, and how do we digitize ourselves faster than others. How do we take the insights that are coming from our data engines faster than others and, and turn those into actions to serve our customers better. And therefore, Zoho plays a very important part in, 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 in just making this journey faster and more futuristic.
from productivity of getting problem solved in real time, getting insights in real time, and then improving our performance of the organization and IQ of the organization. It's all amazing impact in just this one tool. We met a lot of providers in our search for HR solutions. We found a lot of the providers gave us just their standard presentation, whereas Zoho spent a lot of time trying to understand what we were about, what we needed, and they kept saying how customizable it was and how keen they were to customize it for us, and we found that to be true from day one. It only took a couple of months uh, to deploy Zoho Desk. Actually, it was that intuitive, that simple a system. Um, within about two months from seeing the demo to implementing it, I would say it's about eight weeks. I've never heard of a tool so easy to deploy that the business was able to configure and deploy it to their end users. The depth of knowledge that these guys have on all the different business processes and their technology platform is quite phenomenal. Everyone we have talked to have been in the company for 8, 10, 12 years and really know their stuff. At the same time, they have this startup culture and, and a very entrepreneurial culture to just get up and start designing solutions for their customers and, and, and not be afraid when um, you know, the boundaries are pushed. So it's really, um, really great to have a company that is both old and young at the same time. Thank you. So that was the warehouse group, the largest retailer in New Zealand that's going on Zoho One. In fact, we have a team right now in New Zealand that is implementing more and more. They have already implemented a few of the products now more and more because it's a large company, as you can imagine, it's a huge enterprise. So we are identifying more ways to deploy Zoho in their operation. That's one of our largest enterprise customers now. So you can see how Zoho One is now scaling from very small solopreneur organization to very large companies now. And I won't talk further about the product itself. I'll now go back to the thing I started with, the Zoho story, that what is behind all of this, the company behind all of this. And Timothy, he actually referred, alluded to this thing that this company works like a startup and we are actually 5,000 people, one of the most unusual companies you'll see in technology because we still at 5,000 people, we are operating at a, that kind of a startup pace. In the last six months, we launched four new offerings, all joined Zoho One. And as I said in the beginning, it's the culture, the secret sauce is really the culture. And culture, what is culture? I mean, it's the invisible glue. You cannot see it, you cannot touch it, but it's a set of values, attitudes, behaviors, and of course the mental models that you carry around that guide our actions. What do we believe about ourselves? And that's what really is powering Zoho, this company. The company is actually founded in 96. It predates a lot of the, the companies that are more well known. And the reason we grew slowly is it's entirely bootstrapped. We never raised any money at all, ever, in our entire history. So it's where we are today, it's entirely due to internal accruals from, from the first dollar we took in to now steady growth. Now we have reached a scale where we are growing much faster now because we are able to, to channel the resources and invest in faster and faster growth. And this also, it's unusual, if you take our 200 senior most managers in the company, tenure greater than 10 years, that's to be the average, 10 years is nothing in so now. They have never worked anywhere else. And a lot of these people, of course, all of them, almost all of them would be maybe in their late 30s, if that. And there's not many who are even 40 yet, but they've already accumulated 15 years experience working in all this. So you are at only 35, but you have accumulated maybe 12 years, 13 years doing this. Imagine the leverage you get out of this. And this is what shows up in the product. And there is a cultural continuity that people know why certain decisions are made, why products look a certain way, what is the technology behind it, why is 
why does some code look this way or that way, why some technology choice was made, all of this. This kind of institutional memory is really rare. In most companies, it, it just gets forgotten, it gets thrown, because it's not measurable, right? It's not something that shows up in a quarterly statement. There's no line item for an institutional memory or cultural continuity, so we don't value it. And because we retain people, these people who power the products, you gain from their accumulated experience. So ultimately, it actually adds in terms of the product experience, the customer experience. And it's not that we never make mistakes, but there is, the person who made the mistake is there to fix it, correct it. That is crucial, actually, that's crucial. If we go in a wrong path, even a couple of years later, that same person is around to go fix that. We take a different path. That's very important, that accumulated experience. And as that experience accumulates, the products keep getting better. Now I see at a faster and faster pace, because there is a kind of a compound interest here. In fact, I submit to you that the real compound interest we see economy-wide, the real productivity gain, which is what raises our living standard, comes from the accumulation of experience. That's the core, the core reason behind prosperity itself. That as you gain experience in something, you do it better, you do it better every year, and there is a kind of a compound interest in this. And that's where actually the, the financial compound interest arises from this real accumulation of experience. And here's a fun fact, Zoe Siaram was actually born after a project we were doing in 2003, a joint project with a company called Storage Tech, which is no more now. It got acquired by Sun, which got acquired by Oracle, and the product line kind of vanished in the, the thing somewhere. They canceled a joint project we were doing because they were going through difficulties that was a precursor to their own acquisition later. And we were, suddenly we, faced 20 people, and we didn't have anything to do suddenly, right? What would normally, a lot of companies will do is they just lay them off. The project got canceled. What we did is we assembled them, I assembled them in a room and said, we have always been wanting to get into CRM market, here's the opportunity, beautiful opportunity. We have a development team. And one of the engineers, I remember, looked up and said, well, we don't know anything about CRM. He said, no, we are going to learn. <laughs> We are going to learn to do this. And it's our largest and most successful product offering today, where it started in 2003. That. And it's not the only story that Zoho Finance Suite was born out of the failure of Wi Fi management. In this market, the dynamics was different. You have a Wi Fi all over, and there is an enterprise management Wi Fi product that is necessary, but that thing got absorbed into the hardware layer itself. Meaning the hardware vendors are also the Wi-Fi management product vendors. We realized it, we realized that that's not going to be a viable market unless we also got into hardware, which we didn't want to do, we didn't have the resources to do. So we said, we'll pivot, we'll move elsewhere. And it turned out the person who was running it, he had an accounting background before he came into software. He said, I really want to do an accounting product. That's how this thing was born. And this is now our fastest growing product suite, Zoho Finance. And it was born out of a, a failure of another product, actually, in our portfolio. And Zoho Mail, it required an internal reboot twice. The reason is to do it at cloud scale, an email system is not easy. There's a lot of moving parts. Mail in particular is particularly challenging because you have spam both sides. There's spam coming in, and spam people, spammers using us to go out, both. We have to fight all of these. And all these required a lot of careful engineering. And today, it's our second fastest growing product, actually, after the Zoho Finance Suite. So, and all these took time. I mean, the Zoho Finance Suite is now 10 plus years. Mail is now almost 13, 14 years now. So, and we have taken three or four iterations to get them to this current state. But that was hugely helped by the fact of that continuity. And it's that cultural continuity that also allowed us to reinvent ourselves. Because when you build a mail product and you have some, for example, you get attacked by spam, 
and you have to go back to the drawing board. The people who built it have a knowledge now, a knowledge they've accumulated, now they know how best to go address these problems. So we are able to reinvent ourselves. And that, that, that continuity of people allowed us to reinvent. In a way, there is a kind of a continuity of the same people in the background, but also, but what you see in the foreground is the reinvention going on. But these are, the one is aiding the other. And this is the theme behind Zoho, the cultural continuity and endless reinvention. The technology keeps changing, the, the underlying technology foundations change, but there is a cultural continuity that enables us to do that technology. So I say that, I really do mean it when I say this, our products, our technologies, our support, those are the things you see, you experience, but they are the visible manifestations of that invisible or culture. There's no way to separate Zoho the product from Zoho the culture underneath that powers it. And this is another aspect of our culture. Over 500 of our engineers now don't have a degree and they come from our own internal program called Zoho University. And just think, think about it. I mean, any of the products, including this backstage that I'm showing, I'm conducting this thing on, every one of these teams now have people from Zoho University. So basically we take 17 or 18 year olds and put them through a hands-on rigorous one year course. That's what Zoho University is. There's both a classroom style, but a very project based. They are doing constantly from very small projects, hollow world type project all the way they scale up, go. Within a year, they actually become really good. And that's followed by about six to nine months of internship in a product team. And we pay them during that time. Actually, there's two reasons for this. From day one, they enter Zoho University, we pay them. Well, first, I strongly believe young people should not be carrying debt. That's my core conviction. And it's the modern day slavery today that we are trapping young people in college debt. So I strongly believe they should not have to take on debt. And second, when we pay people to learn, and there's a job waiting, there's a team waiting to take them in, there is super motivation, actually. Extreme motivation, you can see it, actually, visibly. There are kids who actually want to short circuit it and join a team, but we hold them back, we said, no, 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 you have to stay here for another few months, then only we'll let you go to the team. So we have to stop them, actually, from joining a team. Because there is that much motivation in a lot of these, when we do that. And it's also, there is a philosophy underneath. We call this contextual and experiential education over formal credentials. The entire company is built around this. There's no job in Zoho where we actually, our requirement will say, you have to have a degree in this or degree in that. There's no job here at all. So we take people without, really without caring about what their specific degrees or what their grades are, any of that. Or, and then we put them through our own internal, a lot of times it's just simply being on the job. We give them time. We know that it'll take them a few months to figure things out, but then they become very good at it because there is a real contextual experiential education going on. And we have seen this repeatedly, hundreds of times in the company, this process. And finally, the best education is one that comes from doing meaningful work, serving customers dealing with customers and shipping product, supporting customers, all of this offers education that just cannot be matched any other way. And the best thing is this education, you actually get paid to do this. So there's no debt involved. And so this is, this is something that I really want to spread this idea because it really works. We have seen this working. I mean, the, this company's health is a testimonial to how well this process is working. And we invest heavily in creating the talent and nurturing the talent. Because ultimately that's all that really counts. I mean, not the, the real asset in a, any company now, it doesn't matter even a software company, any company is really the people. And if you don't nurture and develop talent, you really cannot succeed in the marketplace. And we do all this because we believe that is actually the best way to serve the customer. And that long term is important. We, 
stay private because it also allows us to think long term. In something like Zoho University, we invest in a person for two years, sometimes two and a half, three years before they actually are producing meaningful value to the company. But we wouldn't want to have it any other way because this, this, is, this allows us to invest in people at a very young age and it also allows them to discover their own talent over time. In fact, after Zoho University, a lot of them branch off into a variety of jobs in Zoho, from software programming to sales support, a lot of, even though they are trained in technology, but they actually, the job they do five years later, need not directly involve programming, for example. That's also we have seen. All of these we can do because we stay private. In fact, we could take the company public in a week if we wanted, because all of our numbers are extremely good. We are better than most public companies in this. But we stay private because it, it just allows us that long-term focus. I don't worry about what is this quarter numbers alone. That's not my concern. When we, we have just a, the more very casual attitude about all this because we know the long-term growth, they're just doing so well. And you can see visibly, I mean, this event is now more than doubled in size two and a half times compared to last year. And this also comes from this idea that value comes from a foundation of values. I alluded to it before, that you see only the visible manifestation of a value. I mean, you can measure something in a spreadsheet, but something like a cultural continuity or any of these things you cannot put on a spreadsheet. You cannot assign a value to that asset. <laughs> but that's the most important asset from which all the other assets arise, actually. If you didn't have that asset, you cannot build anything else. Unfortunately, I believe that the financial markets, particularly today in this current type of era, have distorted all this. You have very short-term focus. The entire value system of companies and people have been treated as disposable commodities in way too many companies. Way too companies treat people as resources to be exploited. I mean, resources something you exploit, like oil or coal or whatever, minerals. But that's not the way to build either human happiness or customer satisfaction. None of those objectives are met. Employee happiness and customer satisfaction go together. And I don't believe the present system of the whole financialization is actually aiding this process at all. So that's why we have kept the company private. Even though we could go public anytime, we won't do it. That's not our, in our agenda at all. Because we don't see the markets reflecting the way I want to run the company. And with that sort of the cultural underpinning, I'm going to come to the broader market of the cloud and where we stand today, what is informing our strategy. So I talked a lot about culture, now I'll talk a little bit about strategy now. The theme that I see coming in the market is consolidation. And it's driven by three factors, I'll say as the cloud goes mainstream. Now it's 2018, nobody even doubts that the entire business, everything is moving to the cloud. There's not even a doubt on, on mobile. So first thing is customers now are having adopted 10, 20 different cloud solutions for different aspects of the business. Customers now have a need and a desire for integrated products and fewer vendors to manage. It's a very natural outcome because it just fragmented information is, it doesn't really help anybody. And having to spend just simply integrating information again and again doesn't really add value to any business. So there's customer drive, and then there's the vendors who want to reduce the cost of customer acquisition. In fact, if you look at the public cloud companies today, profitability is either non-existent or minimal. And the reason is, you will go and see that more than 50%, sometimes 60% of the revenue is going into sales and marketing, or really the cost of customer acquisition. So when they take in $100, they're spending $50 or $60 on customer acquisition today. That's true among most of the public cloud companies today. Very few of them actually can escape that level of spend now. And in part, that's also coming from the public market pressure to show a certain growth rate. So if we have to show 30% growth rate, I'm willing to spend 60% on sales and marketing. In the end, I don't make money, but at least I'm keeping the Wall Street happy. So that's how a lot of companies are thinking today. And so for vendors, spreading that cost over multiple products is making sense. But when people wake up to that reality, and if you have not invested in those products, 
How do you do it? You go and acquire companies, basically. And you are going to see a lot more M&A. It's already happening in the industry, but you are going to see a lot more of this in the next few years. And this has a problem too, right? Because a lot of these acquisitions fail. Culture clashes, geography clashes, and people don't gel with each other. Technologies don't mix with each other. All these problems, and that's what, but the public markets overlook all those challenges. It looks good on a spreadsheet today. You reduce the cost of customer acquisition and you spread it over multiple products. That's the logic that's actually driving it today. And finally, there is a large number of old VC companies now. That is, companies that have been funded by venture capitalists for eight, 10 years, and they want exit for their investment. That's called the eight year or 10 year itch because VCs have a time limit on their investment. They need to show a return in, in that eight or 10 years. So they are pushing their portfolio companies to merge or be acquired or acquire or go public, all of those things now. All these mean only one thing now, integrated product suites. It's coming one way or the other. It's coming because of the, the customer push, the vendor push and the VC push. All of all three are converging towards this integrated product suite idea. And we have been aware of this for maybe six, seven years, these forces coming. First, what we notice is there is three or 4,000 cloud companies VCs have funded. There's no way the market can bear the weight of 4,000 companies. It's impossible. So we could see the consolidation coming. And then we saw also that it was getting delayed because there was too much VC money floating around. Because once, you know, if you have another 100 million, another 100 million, another 500 million you can raise, you can postpone not having good economics. <laughs> because you have somebody else's money to spend. You don't have to make money because somebody else's money is there. But we saw this maybe as early as 2011 or 2012, this trend. In fact, uh, funny, we had an event in near San Francisco in 2012, our very first Zoolix. And this is like a fraction of this, right? We had maybe 60 people, I rem remember. We were much smaller then. And I mentioned that in that event, that we are thinking about something called Zoho One. <laughs> but even for us, that was too early. I mean, we still had a lot of products to build all of that, but we were still thinking about it at that time. And I said, I can't promise yet, but it'll come. <laughs> it eventually made its way in 2017. That's when we formally launched it. Even for us, it took from the conception of that idea to actual getting it out and then executing on it, it took five years. Five years is a long term as you can see in this, in this industry. But we had to work on it five years to get all the pieces to fit, and we are still working on it. We still have a lot more coming on that. And so the Zoho CRM Plus was the precursor to Zoho One. That's the first suite we launched. This was what, more, about three years ago now, two and a half, three years ago. And of course, Zoho One, that consolidates all our offerings to one integrated suite. And all the integration, all the hooks, because if you do the mathematics of integrating 40 products, just bi-directional two, two-way integrations, forget three, all of that, is approximately 150 plus. It'll go, I mean, huge number. Oh, not 150, sorry, 1,500, I should say. Just two, two, two pairwise integration. Product A and product B, that's it. That itself will run to a huge number. So we are getting on it. We are actually progressively doing more and more. And in fact, we launched an, an integration product specifically also because we have these thousands of integration scenarios within the Zoho suite, and that is the Zoho Flow, which is also now part of Zoho One. We just launched it a couple of months ago. Zoho Flow is a purely an integration product that integrates both within Zoho and of course outside Zoho. We support 100 other vendors now in that. So this is the depth in the product portfolio, breadth, execution, and I'll just highlight one thing because this is relevant to this event itself. You'll see this event organized on Zoho Backstage. And you saw this, this is brand new. It has never been shown before. This is the first major event where we are actually showcasing this. All the logins that you see, all of these were just really new now. It's the first time it's been tried on this scale. And all these events in the last month, we have trialed it now. So now we are confident in the next month or two, we'll actually formally launch it, it'll appear in your Zoho One account. 
So it tells you how we build products. We are, you know, first we trade ourselves and we conduct all these events. So this backstage is powering our own events now. And that's seven events in the past month and that also tells you the scale of what is happening. And so, and I actually, these events don't even capture the all of it. We had community meetups. We probably had 25 different kinds of events in just the last month and around the world, around the world, everywhere. So that's what is happening now in the Zoho sphere. And Backstage, of course, is integrating CRM and Click and Showtime and campaigns, all of these, that integration is happening as we speak, a lot of this cross integration, so that the person coming to the event, the CRM entry, the Click because of the live interaction, Showtime because what I'm doing now, the whole presentation, the presentation you are viewing, and campaigns for email or any of the additional things, all of these integrations, that's part of why we take our time to complete all the integrations as well. And you also, we are seeing, many of you would have heard about those field and community outreach events we are conducting. These are small scale events, few hours each, 20, 30 people, intimate settings, but we are doing almost every single day now, somewhere in the world. Every single day it's happening now. And the pace is accelerating. We are, this is actually a lot of our investments are going into these now. And Global Footprint, we actually just opened an office in Amsterdam for a big push in EU. Because Europe is a major growth market for us, we are seeing a rapid growth there. We opened our data centers there and that's also a big hit. And this is something important announcement I'm making here. The GDPR, the privacy regulations, those are the strictest in Europe today. And this is very topical, as you know, the congressional hearings going on on privacy now. Where Facebook is facing uh, you know, issues there in Congress, US Congress. You, the EU has adopted really stringent regulations. These regulations are actually stricter than the medical healthcare regulation in the US, HIPAA. HIPAA is already a tough regulation, but GDPR is much tougher than HIPAA and it applies to everyone, I mean, technically everyone in Europe, but we as a technology player now have to put that in our code, complying with the regulation. We decided we will adopt that globally. That means that our US customers, our Indian customers, anywhere in the world, will get the benefit of regulations adopted in Europe to protect customer privacy. That's very important. I think forward-looking companies are starting to do that because everyone recognizes now that privacy is a fundamental right. Someday it will make it to the Constitution. I believe even in the US, someday it's going to make it to the Constitution. That privacy, because in this era with uh, everything is knowable digitally about a person, there has to be safeguards on what can be known, what, how the data should be handled, all of this. This wasn't a factor until the advent of the internet, but now privacy is a fundamental right. We have adopted the posture that we will support these regulations. All the compliance code we are writing now, uh, May 25th is the rollout date for it because it's a hard deadline. The EU has made a very strict regulation on this. We are going to roll that out globally. Even our US data center everywhere will have the same privacy safeguards that we are putting in for European citizens. And this is a fun fact, Sridhar Hegar who heads our EU business, he has been with Zoho 22 years. He was actually our very first engineer. Right, so now he heads our EU business. So that's again a cultural continuity and he is now the champion for GDPR in the company. Because he's there in Europe and he sees how important it is, he's pushing us hard and across the products, there's 40 different products where the customer data could be around. We are working very hard to now get that May 25th deadline. And he's the one pushing. And he is the person who was there from day one almost in the company. So we are opening offices in Singapore and Dubai and, and Mexico. We just started a, an office. Just now we are starting. We just started leasing space there. So everywhere there is expansion going on now. And accelerating enterprise penetration, you heard the warehouse group. So we are seeing a larger and larger customers coming to us. At the same time, that's something that we make a commitment. Our Zoho, we want to span the smallest one person team to the largest. So our commitment is to serve this small customer well and we are actually doing this in a way that we are thinking of ways in which how we can continue that focus on the small business while we also scale up to meet the demands of the large enterprise. And so you saw the depth of the product, all of this, 
for this and the operating system itself is a horizontal terminology. The moment you think about operating system, you are also thinking about applications on top. What is that layer in Zoho? What does that mean? So we have the Zoho platform. The CRM is where the platform is the most you know, fully cooked right now, but it's spreading to all of the Zoho suite. The platform is being extended to Zoho One now. APIs, the software development kit, all of these allow vertical line of business apps. Zoho One itself addresses the horizontal layer of relevant to all aspects of a business. But then on top of it, you build maybe your insurance specific or logistics specific or maybe a petroleum industry specific, all of those types of line of business apps. That's where a lot of the future expansion in the suite and our partner ecosystem, all of that is around this theme, this vertical line of business apps. And mobile SDKs are now available for CRM plus Zoho One to enable custom mobile apps. In fact, the mobile apps we ship are the general apps for a CRM, but we are also now enabling customers to build your own mobile apps, very custom tailored to the business. And the Zoho Creator 5, which we launched just two weeks ago, is enabling a whole new experience of mobile apps, where you can build very custom mobile apps to suit your business with orders of magnitude less effort than what it would take conventionally. So all these we are investing in heavily now because we see the whole, in maybe in five years, I expect to see mostly only phones here, not laptops, and then we may have monitors here where those things hook in. Your phone becomes your all-purpose device, and you only have a larger monitor to hook it into when you need it. So that's how I see this evolving, because this phone is becoming more and more incredibly powerful. And so the mobile SDK is important, the custom mobile apps are very important. And you saw, you saw our uh, ability to execute on a global scale now. We hired over 1,100 engineers in 2017 alone to power all this. And our growth is accelerating, so we are buying real estate, building all of these now at a faster and faster clip. We just bought 100 acres in Austin to set up our large US headquarters here. And so this is the scale of our growth right now. And of course, 500 in marketing sales support and the concierge is important, as uh, Mason talked about. That's something that is also growing rapidly now. Because we see that as customers adopt more and more of the Zoho apps, we are hearing needs for even more, saying, how do I solve this problem? Sometimes we don't have a solution. We have to give them an SDK or an API so that they can build a custom app on top. Or we can show them how to do it in Creator. Or we have to hook them with a partner to do this, build this in Creator or, or using the SDK for them. All this is what the concierge is doing, to connect the right people to do this. And finally, I'll just briefly allude to the technology. We'll go hear a lot about Zia and all of this in that event, so I'll talk about this. There's a, the deluge language is now becoming more and more powerful. That is the knitting glue for customizing Zoho as a platform. And this is the language that also underpins Zoho Creator. And now it is spreading across all of Zoho. The Deluge engine is now in 20 of the Zoho products. Within a year, it will be in all 40. So that add custom functionality of your own on every one of our products across the Zoho One suite. Same way, Zia AI is now going across all products. It started with CRM, it's going into Desk, it's going into Creator Zone, so, and it's also there in Zoho Writer. Everything from, for example, grammar check in grammar uh, detection in Writer is powered by Zia. And of course, you've heard about Zia in the context of Zia Voice, which we launched about a month ago. So the AI is a major effort. We have over 200 engineers now working in AI across Zoho. And that group is also expanding fast. In the next year, that group is going to double in size. So we'll have nearly 500 people working in Zia. And that will go across all the products. So that's what you're seeing. And the language is now expanding rapidly in terms of its capabilities, what it can do. How we can make you more productive. How quickly can you get custom applications, line of business applications on top of Zoho. And already these are all available today, CRM to click chatbot. That's another thing that we are investing where the click 
our chat solution is becoming the universal command line. In fact, I joke that if Zoho is the operating system for business, Click is the operating system for Zoho. Because through Click, you should be able to access all of the data in all of the apps contextually. So for example, I just say last sales last week, the Click bot should understand what I mean. It should get me the relevant report immediately. So that's the level of capabilities we are building into Click. The technology involves AI, understanding conversations, voice, I could do this through voice, and then hooking into the back end of Zoho to get pull exactly the data you need. So it's a lot more powerful than search. I mean, we already have Zoho on search. This is one layer beyond in terms of capabilities because it understands the context of what you are asking. Who, are, who am I? Because I am logged in. So it knows when I'm asking for sales last week, as opposed to a particular salesperson asking sales last week, it knows that the salesperson wants to know what his own achievements are, right? So there is a, that context it knows. It can give all that. So that's where we are building up all of the capabilities now. So I said the operating system for business powered by the operating system of our culture. And these two go together. You have to understand the culture, what drives this company, and what has driven this company for 22 years now. And we hope to be around another 22, another 25, another 50 years. Okay, that's my dream. So that's what we are building for. Along this way, we have declined numerous opportunities to be acquired and we will we are not for sale we are not going to sell the company and we are not going to go public all of these are really some core part of what drives us we are going to stay this way and keep continue executing and 5000 people we still retain that startup spirit in us which is actually a very hard statement to make for most companies because not, after 20, 22 years it's hard to say you are a startup but we are still in that startup spirit we still are doing new things in the uh, new projects that are completely sort of blue sky projects in the company. And that's what is really animates our culture. And you see that in the vibrancy of the product. So with that, I'll conclude my presentation. Thank you. <laughs>